Welcome everybody, thanks for sticking it out to the final presentation. Like can be said, my name is David Tui. I'm an assistant professor here in computer science and I got my PhD in computer science from the University of Alberta about two and a half years ago now or so. And I study both artificial intelligence and games, as in computer games. I'm also the assistant director of the Center for the Analysis and Design of Intelligent Agents, or CADIA, um, basically an AI research center. And kind of contrary to many of the prior talks that specifically focused on AI, I'm actually going to talk about the other side of what I do here and think about how we can use interactive experiences to somehow make people's lives better in some way. And so when I say interactive experience, I mean things like games, like I said already, but I also mean things like simulations, like Hannes Hogni was talking about, or potentially even interactive stories, stories that change while they're progressing in some way, perhaps to suit you better as the reader or audience. When I talk about improving people's lives, that means things like helping people stay healthy or helping them have fun or learn better or feel the feeling of wonder or of being in control over their experience or almost anything else you can think of. I'm interested in achieving that goal through technology. And the way that I try to approach these problems with my work is combining kind of two different disciplines. Right? The first you can think of as being more design focused, thinking about either game design or the design of interactive experiences. And the second part is about artificial intelligence, thinking about having an experience dynamically adapt while it's progressing, or thinking about modeling your player or your learner or whoever the person is that's having the experience. And then also thinking about generating automatically what should happen next toward kind of achieving whatever this improvement to people's lives might be. In this talk, I'm going to focus on, like I said, not the AI side, but rather the design side by showing you a couple of projects that we've been running over the past two years or so um, that kind of leverage these ideas toward improving people's lives. The first is a project about post-operative pain management. This is done in collaboration with Nikoping University as well as nurses and practitioners at Landspitali. The problem that these nurses identified was this. When people undergo surgery, they come home and they're naturally going to experience some amount of pain as they recover. But in general, people aren't good at this. They tend to try to be tough and delay taking their medications or they do activities that exacerbate their condition and effectively they delay their own recovery. So the idea that the nurses at Landspitale had was could we enable people to practice what it is or what it's like to recover and to take medications in a virtual environment rather than on themselves in the real world. And so we help them build this game where you control this character in their house. They have just undergone surgery in the fiction of the game and they need to accomplish various tasks around their house, right? They need to get out of bed, they need to cook themselves some food or wash the dishes and so on. And naturally, kind of as it happens in the real world, these, doing these activities will increase your pain to some extent, right? You're doing physical activity, you've got an incision in you somewhere that's been sewn up that's gonna make you hurt a little bit. And so the pain is modeled here on this scale. So zero is no pain and 10 is a whole lot of pain. Um, and as this character starts to experience pain, the player can choose to take different medications. And the way that these medications affect the player's pain is modeled after real life. So for example, you can take some ibuprofen and then after about 30 minutes, it'll start to have some beneficial effect in reducing your pain, but then it'll wear off slowly over time. If you take too much paracetamol or procodin, for example, you might experience a side effect like the one that we see here. And so this also both shows up as an icon as well as affecting the player's motion as they move around the house. At the end of each day in the game, basically a person plays through three days of the life of this character, they receive this after action review that helps them learn about how their actions affected what was going on in the simulation. You see the red icons, those indicate activities that caused them to experience some extra pain. The orange icons indicate the taking of medication with the yellow outline showing when side effects occurred. So you see after the medication, the pain, after a little delay, the pain dropped, the pain drops after medication again. Here it actually went up because I think they did too many activities and the side effects were so bad. And sometimes the medication just doesn't work. And at that point, you would need to use this button up here to call for help to the, to the hospital, the fictional hospital, and then the pain would go back down again to represent you having received some good advice. 
The green icons represent activities that aren't medication that are helpful in terms of reducing pain, like resting or distracting yourself with some form of entertainment. Okay, this is the second project. Do you all know about CCP and their game EVE Online? Right? This is a local games company that produced the game, and within this game, there exists a mini game, you could call it, called Project Discovery. So this is a joint project between a multinational research initi initiative called the Human Protein Atlas, Swiss company called Massively Multiplayer Online Science, Reykjavik University, and CCP. And here's the story. The researchers in the Human Protein Atlas had a large number of images of human cells, and they want to know about the proteins in these cells. It's important for their research to know um, basically where the proteins are and what function they're serving in the different cells. And so the goal here is to perform a classification task, classification task, excuse me. Specifically, what do the green things represent in this image? While Unfortunately, machine learning techniques aren't quite good enough to do this yet, to classify these things correctly, part, partly because there are so many possible classes that could be given. Non-expert humans can be trained to do this quite well. And so the idea that MMOS had was, okay, look at all this data we have. We have a lot of non-experts in the context of computer video games. Can we incentivize them to do this annotation task for us in terms of giving them in-game rewards? And so MMOS came to CCP and said, hey, you've got tens of thousands of players in your game. We have tons and tons of images that need annotating. Can you help us out? Can we make a game that enables people to do this annotation task? And so CCP came to us and said, all right, we need some help with this. I found a few students for them to build this mini game. And then it was deployed uh, basically as project discovery in the context of EVE Online. And so here are some statistics to close out the talk. Uh, this is from the first month of operation. We spun it up about a year ago. Over 24,000 participants, these are people playing the game EVE Online, uh, played past the tutorial section, which trained them how to use this system. We had over 4.5 million classifications made. This is people saying, OK, this is the part of cell where the protein is living. And consensus was reached ov on over 180,000 images. Now you can imagine what kind of a win this is for the team of 10 or 12 researchers that were previously having to do this by hand. Right? It would take them a long, long time to get through that magnitude of images. Uh, and so yeah, we ended up with quite a few happy scientists as a result. And so I hope with this brief talk, I've given you a sense of kind of what it is to, to try to improve people's lives using both the ideas of design and a little bit of AI that you've heard about from other talks. If you'd like to hear more about my particular take on these bottom three, I'd be happy to talk with you after this lecture. Thanks for your attention.